I'm your boy Omel underscore two cut mill. I'm in the building with my dog Bricks. What's Bricks, happening? what's going on, Bricks? How you doing? Hey man, I just got back to Atlanta. Feeling great, man. So let's get into this. Tell these people where you from, man. Man, I'm from Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Did you move to Atlanta? Yep. I turned 18, moved to Atlanta. Okay, what made you move to Atlanta? Um, I was gonna go to college. I mean, I wasn't gonna go to college, but my mom was like, yo, if you go to college, then uh, we'll try to help you out a little bit. I said, okay, we'll fucking go up. What college? Atlanta Tech. Oh, you wanna try and go like a Georgia? I, trying, I went to college for three weeks. Three weeks. So how you get into the music then? Well, I have I've been making beats since I was like maybe like sixth, seventh grade. Uh-huh. But so across from Atlanta Tech, there was a, a studio and I ended up started working there and I was working and then it was like me and like Jacquees. Okay. And a couple other and I was like 18, he was like 16. That's King R and B right now. Yeah. Shout out Jacquees. Yeah. So you were with Jacquees when he was younger. Yeah. The King R and B. <laughs> and to now. So y'all kind of came up together somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. Okay. And so with that being said, like what, like how you even like get your placements, like give us the whole rundown. Like you been making beats, how you get in the studios, like the whole nine. Okay, well, like I said, I was working at that studio across from the school and then uh, I started meeting other people in different studios. So I started getting invited, hey, come over here, come over here. Then I ended up started working at a studio Right across the street from here, actually, Penthouse. Oh, okay. On Auburn. Yeah. And I was working with my boy Ty, and I interned up there. And I started working with everybody from like the future, Rocco. And mm -hmm. my first session was like Gorilla Zoe. Man, Gorilla Zoe was popping though. Yeah, so this is like back then. And he was with Block, uh, yep. ENT back then. Yep. Mm -hmm. How was it being with Drake? Shit. I mean, I was there, they rolled a red carpet out for this man. So every. And with Doug as well. They mm -hmm. rolled the red carpet out for him and every night. I mean, I was on tour with 21 as well. 21 Savage, shout out to him. Yeah. And uh, that's how I did that song with 21 Thug and Drake. We did that on the tour bus, on tour. Damn. And then I had went to Paris for New Year's, came back, we went in the studio, and Thug was like, you gone with this one, dog. Yeah. And then he played it. And the Drake rush came on. <laughs> it went on. It was up. I was gassed, man. Damn. Yeah, I was gassed. So you went on. You did the full tour with Drake? Yeah. Did the full tour. Crazy. Okay, I'll give you a crazy story. There we go. I knew it was coming. There right. we go. So this is real, 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 real crazy. Okay. Like, I do things people wouldn't normally do. I guess that's what makes me hot. Mm -hmm. But, okay. So I'm on tour with the, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's the tour has two legs. So they got the first leg, second leg. Okay, okay, so Thug, we doing the first leg, right? First I didn't know. Leg. I'm thinking we doing the whole tour. Mm -hmm. However, we in Manchester one day, and Thug called, he like, all right, come on, we go home. And I'm, I've been on tour with him and Drake for, you know, a month straight. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, we're going home. I'm like, going home, what you mean? He's like, well, it's over. So everybody pack up, we fly back to Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta about two days. I'm like, okay, uh, nah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, man, real true story. I had my backstage pass from the Drake tour. I took my own money, I flew back out, and got back on the tour. How'd that happen? So, you caught, you had it? No. Nah, I just, I was like, man, I, my one of my goals was to work with, work with Drake. You know what I'm saying? Work with the OVO and all them folks. Okay. So, I took my I took my little backstage pass and I flew to I think it was Norway. Okay. I just walked in like normal. I walked backstage. I'm in Drake room eating whatever we normally eat. Yeah. And then they pulled me to the side like, "Hey, Doug, still here?" I was like, "Oh no, nah, no, nah, don't fall in love." He was like, "Well, you gonna have to, you know." I was like, "Well, shit, can I watch the show?" They was like, "Yeah, you good? Gonna watch the show, but you can't be back here and stuff." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, "Okay." Still got my pass. Walked in. Long story short. I was like, these niggas gonna see me every motherfucking day. I took all my money. I didn't know when I broke on this shit. I took all my money. I booked all my own flights, all my own hotels, and I followed that tour with my backstage pass. Got cool with all them niggas. Started getting in the studio every day. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I was like, these niggas gonna see me every day. I went to every club. Damn. With my pad, walked in with them niggas, and then I'm getting cool with all everybody on that motherfucker. 
So then they start, we start getting in the studio. That's how I got to work on the album. That's how I got my, my hottest songs. But I definitely went broke. Cause it's like, I'm flying to 20 different cities. Yeah, yeah. Out of the month. I go I'm broke on to LA, too. shit. I put it all online, dog, but that shit came back like tenfold, for real. So uh, I was just doing a bunch of sessions, started getting a little hotter, started working like, I was working like Scooter, and you know, all, everybody that was hot back in them uh, mm -hmm. same damn time, days. Yeah. Like, start working at Hot Beats, the old ones. Mm -hmm. working at, so was you, how you get into engineering? So was you engineer first, producer, or always produced and kind of just fell into engineering? I mean, I was producing five years and I didn't even know what them vocals was. Yeah. I started engineering over here and then that kind of got me in everybody's face. Okay. I'm doing your sessions. Yeah. So you got to talk to me. Who would you consider maybe some of the top producers then? Back then, my boy like Sham, mm -hmm. he worked on like Wash and Thorn and stuff. Even I was in there with like, you know, Slade. Yeah. I used to be in there with Slade. You know what I'm saying? Running to the store and shit, and <laughs> he was making beats, and I was like, damn, I gotta get my shit hard. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I was in there with like D Rich. Okay. Come on, like, oh, real hard hitting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you went home and just like, with well, time out? No, it was just, I was, you, you know, like Fat Boy, Zaytoven. I was in there with everybody, but mm -hmm. I was just soaking it in and just slowly building my skill set over time. Mm -hmm. So you might have, you might send a beat off, somebody jumped on it and then put it on a mixtape and they'll be like, hey, I got a placement. So how do you define placements? When it's a major label. Okay. And they send a major bag. And that's, so when you, so who was the first artist that you was like, oh, okay. Um, probably Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates. Which song was that? Again. Again, that was I just went go. Everybody around you pretending that they your partner. Whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel when you was like, when they called you and said, hey, um, you, you probably about to be on this, this album. How did you feel about that? I was gassed, but I was like, all right. You know, I ain't have no kind of leadership. So I was like, all right, what am I charging for this beat? I'm right. gonna throw a number out there. And uh -huh. I say what they say. I threw a number out of which now I'm thinking about it. that number was low. Yeah. But I was just getting started, so I didn't know. And they was like, yeah, I was like, for real? I was like, all right. Don't you hate when they say, yeah, too quick? You be like, they was like, oh, okay. No negotiation. Send the paperwork. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I was lit, though, you know? Mm -hmm. I was a kid. I was like, 20 or something. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's when you like took it, like, oh, okay, I can really make this an actual career. I, it was always my career. Mm -hmm. But how was that feeling when you heard it? I was gas. I was like, okay, well now my beats is worth at least this. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know what I'm saying. From there, who you start working with after that? Man, I've just always been working with everybody in the city. That's how everybody know me, and we all kind of came up together. Like I was working with like Migos, Migos before Versace. Ah, uh. like from time, uh -huh. Rich the Kid. Right at that studio up there, it was me and Rich the Kid. You can pull up songs with me and Rich the Kid, like. 2012 and shit. Mm. Like, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I just been knowing everybody. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that everybody I knew ended up blowing up. So it just kind of just happened that way. Right now, my process is changing a lot because I'm not doing any sampling or using anybody else's stuff. So I'm making the whole beat in its entirety. So I'm making, I make my own samples. Okay. So that's totally different than making a beat. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, it might take me thirty minutes to make a sample to make it sound like it's off an old record or something like that because mm -hmm. I don't want to try to spend my money up. Have the music scene changed since you've been gone? Yeah. Did it get a lot better here? When I left, Fetty Wap was hot. Oh uh, yeah, it been a little bit. Shout out to Fetty Wap. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but uh, yeah, it been a little hot second. I worked with Fetty Wap in the UK. How was that? I worked on that song that uh, Six Nine and Fetty Wap and A Boogie song. I worked on that. Oh yeah, that song popping. Y'all heard that song before? Yeah. She was nine. I saw her on my river. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That song was popping. What's uh, what you got coming up for 2019? Baby. Little baby. Gonna. Okay. Slime. Mhm. Mm Gates. Gates. Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich. Hey, he popping. Wayne. White. Damn. Pray for the six guy. <sighs> for Drake. So have you ever been in there? You like, oh, okay, it's kind of dope being in there. Shit, working with Thug. 
Okay, what make that so? Because it's just you don't know what's gonna come out this man's mouth. Oh, for real, man, he just going there. And you don't know what, you don't know what's coming, but it's gonna be like mm -hmm. so you would have never thought of. It. That's why I say he do his job. Like when I'm in the studio with Doug, I'll be more wild. Mm. I'll be like, damn, this nigga's killing this shit while I'm in there. I'm like, damn, mm. this nigga's killing shit. So who you feel like that's an artist that maybe you might have worked with, people might not be hip to right now that you think they're probably gonna pop. I know you said Roddy Rich, he doing his thing, shout out to him too. But who else you think that that might be going crazy? That might creep up on, cause you know every year is that one dude that come out of nowhere. I mean, I like the Chicago rappers right now. Chicago rapper, get us hip to it. Who you thinking? I like Saba. Saba likes me, no. Okay. I like uh, like those. I like those guys a lot. So for the young people that's out there right now who trying to even get to where you at, man. Like, do you have any like encouraging things or like motivational things you can just like tell them? Well, for the young people out there that's trying to get where I am at, and you can be way past where I'm at. I feel like I'm just starting, but I feel like you should always think like that. But I just want to say like, don't let anybody. It's a lot of dream killers out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, like when I was growing up, people told me I wasn't gonna be shit and this and that. I'm from a small, small, small town where ain't nobody shit. So mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing the same stuff everybody else doing, which which you don't, you don't have to do that, man. You could, you could be an original. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's it's okay to be yourself. Mm -hmm. I had to be. I had to just look around in my surroundings, like, man, this shit ain't me. Y'all know what time it is. I'm your boy Oatmeal underscore Two Cup Goddamn Millie. Mm -hmm. and I'm rocking with my boy Bricks, man. The Brick, the man. Hey. Yeah, yeah.